Mr. President, I brought this issue here as a matter of public importance because what these laws represent is, quite frankly, ecocide. It is ecocide because it is the deliberate and calculated destruction of the environment. Yesterday, the Minister for Primary Industries said that there were people in this parliament and in this chamber that want to rip up these land clearing laws, and he is uncharacteristically right. Yes. Damn straight, I want to rip up these laws. We know, and this government knows, that these laws will lead to broad scale clearing, the loss of threatened species, and damage to land and water. Even worse, this government knows that this is a global catastrophe because of the huge greenhouse gas and climate change implications. You are not satisfied with just approving huge new coal mines, but you also want to destroy carbon sinks like native vegetation. It's laws like this in Queensland that have led Australia to be named a global deforestation hotspot. And it is this law in New South Wales that will shamefully cement our place in global environmental vandalism. These laws are a deliberate strategy to destroy the environment. Why? because it lies in the way of the big end of town. The big end of town that wants the right to clear whatever it wants, whenever it wants, wherever it wants. And the Liberal and National parties, the Berejiklian government is always keen to go out of their way to put profits before people. The environment is in the way of the big mining companies who can't even be bothered finding biodiversity offsets anymore, so now they can just pay into a fund. It's in the way of big agribusiness, the mega farms that have pushed out small farmers who take care of their land. And it's in the way of the big property developers for whom green spaces, trees and animals are just an inconvenience. Last week, the Nature Conservation Council had a huge win in the Land and Environment Court, which ruled that the government's land clearing codes were invalid, Minister. These codes, like the Equity Code and the Farm Code... Order! Because yeah, the Environment Minister can't do a paper, is Point of order. Mr Buckingham, on a point of order. The member is making a significant contribution to a matter of public importance. It's very difficult to hear what yep. she is saying because of the conversation and the interjections in the yep. chamber. I'd ask you to bring the House to order. Yes. Look, I uphold the point of order, and as the honourable member would note, I, I called order on two occasions as well. I will call members to order if they interject any further. The honourable member has the call. Thank you, Mr. President. These codes, like the Equity Code or the Farm Code Plan, have been designed against the advice of environmentalists, ecologists, and many farmers, because they are a blank check for land clearing. The codes were ruled invalid by the court because this lazy, arrogant government couldn't even meet the very low level of governance built into the law that shamefully passed this house last year. The codes were struck down because the primary industries minister failed to obtain the, the concurrence. Pe uh, the Honourable Peter Phelps on a point of order. Stop the clock. The Honourable Member said shame that a bill shamefully passed the House this year. That is a reflection on the decision of the House and should be withdrawn. Yes. Um, I uphold the point of order and I ask the Member to withdraw that comment. I withdraw that comment. Thank Mr. you. Mr President. The codes were struck down because the Primary Industries Minister failed to obtain the concurrence of the Environment Minister before making the codes, as is required by law. Yet, late on Friday night, just hours after the court ruled the codes invalid, the codes were resurrected from the dead. Absolutely. Exactly as they were. Exactly as they were. Not a finger was lifted to improve them, even though the government knows full well the havoc that they will cause. To his credit, the Primary Industries Minister has never really pretended to care about the environment. <laughs> but it beggars belief that the Minister for the Environment, or should we call them the Minister Against the Environment, as you is commonly known in the community now, once again signed the death warrant for the environment. But the Honourable Member of Point of Order, stop the clock. A minister. Uh, Mr President, the member is now casting aspersions on a member of the other place and knows that in doing so she should only do it through a substantive motion. Yep. That is not this motion. This motion is about public importance. Yes. Yep. She wants to cast aspersions upon a member of the other place. There are other mechanisms in the House to do so. I uphold the point of order. The member knows better. But thanks to a GIPA from the Nature Conservation Council, we know what the minister knew before she signed these laws and what the real impact of these would be, because the very document that the minister signed, the concurrence memo, has been made public. Now it's there for everyone to see, and it is clear that the impact on the environment was deliberately 
and will willfully ignored in the contravention of the role the Environment Minister have protecting the environment in line with the principles of ecologically sustainable development. This memo says it in black and white that the real impact of the laws will be, and this information has been hidden from this parliament, but which sadly validates that the Greens and the environment groups have been saying since day one the destruction that these laws will cause. To the crossbench, the shooters, fishers and farmers, and the Christian Democrats, who enthusiastically supported this bill, and the members of the Liberal Party who pretend to care about the environment from their leafy eastern suburbs and North Shore electorates. You can never say you didn't know what you voted for. In the memo, the Office of the Environment and Heritage forecasts a significant spike in the first two years of the codes, with clearing increasing up to an incredible 45 per cent. One can only presume that not much will be left to clear after two years. <laughs> the memo states that, and I quote, in OEH's view, the current version of the code has some provisions which will not only be formally monitored and or are difficult to enforce. It goes on to say that under just two codes, there are huge risks, including widespread removal of key habitat for threatened species, including koala habitat. Not 10, not 20, not 80, but literally 99% of koala habitat is on the chopping block. Just 1% of koala habitat is safe under these codes, admitted to by the government's own document, and yet the Minister for the Environment signed it. The memo goes on to detail what else is at risk. Remnant threatened ecological communities, no assessment of soil or water quality, no monitoring of set-aside areas. This list is very long, Mr. President. And who wins from this, Mr. President? Despite the rhetoric that this has nothing to do with broad-scale clearing, the memo clearly says the main benefits are likely to be private benefits for large farm operations which broad-scale clear under the code. The community are angry. And this isn't just a government that is indifferent to the environment, but one that seems to go out of its way to destroy it. That is why these laws and debating these laws here today is so vital for the community and for public interest. In everything they say, the minister crows about the Biodiversity Conservation Trust, which in this government's fantasy land will offset the thousands of hectares being chainsawed and bulldozed. Well, just recently, the Biodiversity Conversation Trust tabled its business plan, and it makes interesting reading for what is in it and what is not in it. We have the usual jobs for the mates that we see with this Liberal National Government. The head of the Biodiversity Conservation Trust is none other than the former Liberal Minister in the Howard Government, Robert Hill AM. Oh, and, look, and look who else is on there. Former Liberal Member of Monaro, Gary Nain. Monero. And do you know who Monero. isn't? Monero. And do you know who isn't on there, Mr. President? No ecologists, no members of the Wentworth Group of Scientists, and no environmental group representatives. Although I do sympathize with the government, and Gary I do sympathize with the government, as I imagine no credible ecologist or environment group would be part of the fig leaf covering, covering this government's addiction to chainsaws and bulldozers. I imagine Professor Hugh Possingham isn't answering the minister's calls after the New South Wales government completely ignored his advice in making these terrible laws. The strategic goals of the Biodiversity Conservation Trust also make for interesting reading. One would assume that they might involve biodiversity or conservation or perhaps the conservation of biodiversity, but one would be sorely disappointed. There is a complete focus on enacting agreements and no measurable ob objective of nature actually being conserved. We may not be able to disallow these land clearing codes and rip up these laws just yet, but the day will come soon. And I have no doubt that your Liberal National light cronies in the Shooters and Fishers Party and Christian Democrats, who have zero regard for the environment or for animals, well, will vote this motion down. That's one way to but, March 20, but March 23rd, Order. 2019. Continue. March 23rd, 2019 is coming, Mr. President. And I can assure you, I can assure you that the Greens will not rest until these laws are gone and a strengthened Native Vegetation Act is reinstated. One which is actually properly resourced to ensure the protection, not destruction of the environment. And one that helps the long-term sustainability of our farmland, soil, water, and nature. Perhaps more importantly, we want a full and proper examination of how these laws were allowed to come about the backroom dealings, and whose backs were scratched to make this happen. 
This is New South Wales after all, Mr. President, the land of Eddie Obey, then Ian McDonald, and the infamous Operation Spicer. If the government isn't afraid of scrutiny of its laws, well. I dare you to support this motion. I dare you to support this well, motion, Minister. And Order. let's have this Minister debate today. Interjecting. Let's have this debate today. But I think the government is afraid of a full and proper debate with all the new information that we have about how devastating these laws will be for our environment and our communities. I commend the motion to the House. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. President.